I'm using the CEP version. I will take you from the nations. I will gather you from all countries. And I will bring you to your own fertile land. Hallelujah. I will sprinkle clean water on you. And you will be cleansed of all pollution. I will cleanse you of all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove your stony heart from your body and replace it with a living one. And I will give you my spirit so that you may walk according to my regulations and carefully observe my case. My case laws. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezekiel gave a prophecy on what is to come. That the Lord will, is, was going to gather the Jews from all the nations. All the nations of the earth. He's going to bring them to their own fertile land. Hallelujah. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be cleansed of all your pollution. I'm telling you, the more we dwell and familiarize ourselves with, the, with this world, we pollute our families. Amen. Amen. No wonder Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12 verse 2. You know what he said there? Do not conform to the patterns. To the patterns of this world. Romans 12 verse 2. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. But be ye transformed by renewal or renewing of your mind. Through the word of God. That is only possible through the, renew, through the word of God. So I will sprinkle clean water on you. And you will be cleansed of all your pollution. I will cleanse you of all your idols. When we think about idols, we think we think about those things that the Indians, for example, do. Because I think Indians are the ones who have this kind of things nowadays. When COVID hit, they brought all their idols and burnt them. Because they, the idols could not help them. Hallelujah. I will cleanse you of all idols. Today, idols can even be the things we we, we keep in our hearts the things. It can be your wife. It can be your husband. It can be your money. It can be your wealth. Idols. can be your own knowledge. Education. Amen. It can be your own achievements. You you have a courtesy. You can dare to say that, hey, I have a track record. <laughs> Hallelujah. Idols. Idols. Things that are closer to, the, to a man's heart more than he is to God. Very dangerous. Hallelujah. Very dangerous. I will give you a new heart. Yes, a new heart that will not idolize your achievement and the things of this world. Prosperity and all these things. I will give you. I will give you. God is saying I will give you. Say amen. Hallelujah. A new heart. A new heart. Very new heart. And put a new spirit in you. <laughs> a new spirit in you because the one that was there hey wow I will remove your stony heart from your body you remember the children of Israel it was so terrible in the wilderness the Holy Spirit says these people who are stiffy stiffy naked <laughs> hey they have stiff necks. They cannot hear. They cannot take instructions. Hallelujah. 
the Holy Spirit actually gave a witness. If you read Hebrews chapter number, is it Hebrews chapter number three? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Now, God is saying, "I will remove your stony heart from your body." Is he, by the way, God is prophesying to these same same people, same 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 people through Ezekiel. They are the ones who wandered in the wilderness for for four hundred years. What were they wandering for? But they could not take instruction from the Lord. I will remove your stony heart from your body and replace it with a living one. Because the, the other one was like it was dead. Amen. A living one. And I will give you my spirit so that you may walk according to my regulations and carefully observe my case laws. God is saying I will give you my spirit. So because your spirit is, is dead, God is now putting his own spirit, his own living spirit. The one that hovered in verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1 on the creation. Hallelujah. You know that spirit that hovered over the creation <laughs> is now inside me and you. Hallelujah. It is now inside me and you. Hey. Hallelujah. So this is wonderful. Luke chapter 10. I'm just, I'm just paraphrasing this thing so that we, we go to our main thing. Luke chapter number 10 from verse 25. A legal expert stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to gain eternal life? This is a legal expert. Hallelujah. The Orangos. You know the Orangos? Eh? Or uh, what do we call these guys? This museo uh, Picky Pink Picky Pinky <laughs> Hallelujah. A legal expert stood up to test Jesus. Teacher. <laughs> he said, what must I do to gain eternal life? This legal expert <laughs> does not know <laughs> what to do to gain eternal life. So he's coming to Jesus Christ. Look at what Jesus said in verse 26. What is written in the law? He's asking him. How do you interpret it? Amen. He's a legal expert. And he responded in verse 27. You must love the Lord your God with all. So this legal expert knows things. But he had to use, he had to come to Jesus. You must. Look how, look, look how he's quoting it. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart. Remember that stony heart that we are talking in Ezekiel chapter 6? Eh? You must love the Lord your God with all, not half of your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Apart just from loving the Lord with all your, with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind. You must also love your neighbor as you love yourself. Hey. So, this love is going like this now. It's not just focused on God. Amen. You must love the Lord your God with all your soul, your heart, your strength, your mind, and, and above all. He's saying, love your neighbor even as you love yourself. Verse 28. Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Amen. He does not tell him that you will, after you have done this, you will have eternal life. He's telling him, do this and you will live. Amen. Hallelujah. Meaning that eternal life is not a life that people just gain to come and sit around. Amen. Hallelujah. 
do this and you will live. You will live. You will surely live. You will surely have that life. Amen. Now, Romans chapter number 1 from verse 18. Now, this is Apostle Paul now revealing this side of things in the New Testament. Hear what he's saying. God's wrath is being revealed from heaven against all the ungodly behavior. God's wrath is being revealed from heaven against all the ungodly behavior and the injustice of the human beings who silence the truth with injustice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Paul was another legal expert. But this one now knew, knew the things of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's wrath is being revealed from heaven against all the ungodly behavior. And the injustices of human beings who silence the truth. Injustice. Uh, this is because what is known about God should be plain to them because God made it plain to them. Verse 20, ever since the creation of the world, God's invincible qualities, which are God's eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen because they are understood through the things God has made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ever since the creation of the world, God's invincible qualities. You know, God is invincible. But he does visible things. Hallelujah. God is invincible. But his acts, his creation, are very visible. God's invincible qualities, which are God's eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen because they are understood. They are understood. The creation makes people to understand things. They understand they can understand about God's eternal power and divine nature. So humans are without excuse. You don't have excuse of not believing him, of not actually trusting him. Because every, every bit of his creation reveals his, his own divine nature, his own divine power. So Paul is saying that humans are without excuse. Although they knew God, they didn't honor God as God or thank him. <laughs> Instead, their reasoning became pointless and their foolish hearts were darkened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While they were claiming to be wise, they made fools of themselves. While they were claiming to be wise, they made fools of themselves. They exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images that look like mortal humans, birds, animals, and reptiles. Remember, remember the children of Israel when Moses climbed the mountain and he came, he came down? The guy came and found a calf. These guys have made a calf. Cindy, remember that story? Yeah? Moses was so terrified. He just met God. And he came down, and this other side of, of the people that don't even know God. Hallelujah. It is different when you know God. The way other people view God is very different when you have met God yourself. Hallelujah. So we should actually strive to know God, to know God. These people. They exchange the glory of the immortal God. For images that look like mortal humans, mortal, dying humans, susceptible to death. Also birds, also animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to their heart. God abandoned them to their heart desires, which led to the moral corruption of, of degrading their own bodies with each other. 
they traded God's truth for a lie. And they worshipped and served the creation instead of the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Are we together? Are we together? You know in India, I had in India, they all they, I, I think they, they idolize cows. Cows. You know cows? In India, they, they don't slaughter. India. I was hearing somebody telling us, he told us in 20, 2019, India has almost 500 million goats. And Jesus is one of them. How many? 500 million. And Jesus is one of them. Themselves are 1.3 billion. Hallelujah. <laughs> 1.3 billion Indians. 500 million gods. Jesus is one of them. Are we together? Now, these people traded God's truth for a lie. They worshipped and served the creation. How bad is it to worship a creation instead of the creator? The creator is blessed forever. Amen. That's why God abandoned them to degrading lust. They are female traded natural sexual relations for unnatural sexual relations. This thing about lesbianism and gays, when our president was just announced, CNN came rushing. They came. Mr. Ruto, what do you think about LGBTQ? Eh? What do you think about this one? He says, uh, the needs of our people are very different than what you guys are proposing. Amen. Say the rights of this LGBTQ. There's a plus this base. <laughs> Amen. Are we together? So the guy said, we, you know, uh, the needs of, of, of these people are different. The Muslims and the Muslims, the Muslims eh, these people, they have gone to some level. They are not hit by poverty. Their problem is not poverty anymore. Their problem is not, is not famine. Their problem is not drought anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Their problem is not over dependency. When a man like me, after suffering in high school being chased more than three times a time, finally God, God helps me and I, I come out of college. God helps me get a job. When I come, I'm not spared. By the wrath of over-dependency. Over Amen. Hallelujah. A lot of poverty in our African setup. <laughs> Are you hearing? So, to them, this is true. They are trading the natural desires that God has put inside for unnatural ones. Which is dangerous. It's good our president refused. Otherwise, we'll be living in a, in a society accepting LGBTQ. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is merciful. Also, in the same way, the males traded natural sexual relations with females and banned with lust for each other. Males performed shameful actions with males and they were paid back with the penalty they deserved for their mistakes in their own bodies. Since they didn't think it was worthwhile to acknowledge God, God abandoned them to a defective mind. God abandoned them. You know, this is the cause of all problems. God abandoning people. 
Amen. Are we together? Are we together? The most dreadful thing, the most dangerous thing that people can ever face is God abandoning people. What will come out of that is very dangerous. <laughs> now this is just one of them. He's saying God abandoned them to a defective mind. Why? That is very dangerous. Defective. Defective. Full of defects. To do inappropriate things. What does, I, what does I, a defective mind do? It does inappropriate things. So they were filled with all injustice, wicked behavior, greed, evil behavior. They are full of jealousy, murder, fighting, deception, malice. They are gossips. They slander people. They hate God. They hate God. They hate God. They are rude and proud. And they brag. They invent ways to be evil. Why? That is very dangerous. You have become devil yourself. They invent ways to be evil. And they are disobedient to their parents. They are without understanding, disloyal, without affection, and without mercy. Though they know God's decisions that those who persist in such practices deserve death, they, do, they not only keep doing these things, but also approve others who practice them. Hallelujah. This is very dangerous. Are we together? Are we together? This is really nice. Now, I want to show you in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Something the prophet of God told people in the Old Testament. This is what he said. The Lord proclaims, cast are those who trust in mere humans. Cast, cast, cast. Jeremiah 17, 5. The Lord proclaims, cast are those who trust in mere humans, who depend on human strength. This is what I was telling you. Idol. Idols. And turn their hearts from the Lord. They will be like a desert shrub that doesn't know when relief comes. They will live in the parched places of the wilderness in a barren land where no one survives. Happy are those who trust in the Lord, who rely on the Lord. They will be like trees planted by the streams whose roots reach down to the water. It's exactly what the psalmist told us in Psalms chapter number one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. The other one is you are, you are located, you are like a tree planted beside streams of water. But this one is saying, you are like that tree planted by the streams, but now your roots reach down to the water. So you have, you have, you are connected to the source itself. To the supply. They won't fear drought when it comes. Hallelujah. I was hearing somebody today, actually, just, just roughly, I just had a message. He was saying that there is, a, there is a very terrible famine and inflation and, you know, one of the worst economic crises that will come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm saying there is a guy who is saying there will be an economic crisis coming in the near future. And God will take care of his people no matter the crisis. Are we together? Are we together? 
God will take care of his people no matter the situation. They won't be stressed in the time of drought. They won't be stressed. Pastor was reading to us yesterday James 5 and he was saying there is a scripture that says is anyone among you afflicted? Let him pray. Now, he told us the meaning of that word. The meaning of that word. Affliction. It means just a minute. Hallelujah. Now he's saying, is anyone among you afflicted? Let him pray. He was telling us in the morning, the, in the morning prayers that the word, the word afflicted actually means depressed. Huh? Stressed. Anxious. Is anyone among you anxious? Let him pray. Is anyone among you stressed? Let him pray. Is one, anyone of you bound in a cage of captivity? You stress and care in the things of this world. Let him pray. Now, he's saying those people who trust in the Lord won't be stressed in the time of drought or fail to bear fruit. You know, do you remember the time of Jacob when the guy sowed, when the Lord told him to sow seed and then he harvested so much, a hundredfold, Genesis says, and he became very great. Hallelujah. Are we together? They wouldn't be stressed in the time of drought or fail to bear fruit. The most cunning heart is beyond help. Who can figure it? Who can figure it out? I, the Lord, probe the heart and discern hidden motives. I, the Lord, probe the heart and discern hidden motives to give everyone what they deserve. E, Jeremiah 17 verse 10. It's a heavy verse. Amen. I, the Lord, probe the hearts of people to discern hidden motives. To give everyone what they deserve. The consequences of their deeds. You know what? Thank God for mercy. One of the things that, ha- that, has, that, that Jesus brought is grace. If you read the first chapter of John, say, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth, grace and reality, came by Jesus Christ. Now, grace there, inside grace, there is mercy. Amen. Mercy means exemption from judgment. Exemption from judgment. So people are exempted from judgment. Hallelujah. We are exempted from judgment. Now, what if God was to judge you by all your deeds? Who will stand? The psalmist say, who will stand if God is to count our iniquity? Amen. No one will stand. This is very profound. Romans chapter number 2 verse 1. Romans chapter number 2 verse 1 So every single one of you who judge others is without any excuse. You condemn yourself when you judge another person. You are condemning yourself actually when you judge another person. That's what Paul is saying. Because 
the one who is judging is doing the same thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have you seen eh, people who are critical about others, the behavior of others? They are doing the same thing. Okay. We know that God's judgment agree with the truth. God's judgment. I, we, we have just read Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 17 down chapter 11. God is to accord people according to it, their deeds. The consequences are the measure of their deeds. Now, God's judgment agree with the truth. And his judgment is against those who do this kind of things. If you judge those who do this kind of things, while well, you do the same thing yourself, think about this. Do you believe that you will escape God's judgment? Or do you have contempt for the riches of God's generosity, tolerance and patience? Don't you realize that God's kindness is supposed to lead you to change your heart and life? Wow. Wow. Don't you realize that God's kindness, God's kindness is supposed to lead me and you to change our hearts and life. So God's kindness is for a purpose here. Amen. God is not just kind for a because he, he has to be kind. No. He is kind to me and you so that we can change. We can change our heart and life. You are storing up wrath for yourself because of your stubbornness and your heart that refuses to change. So, this is what, this is what, it, this is what actually it means when somebody is stubborn and refuses to change. Imagine the Bible also advocates for change. Amen. <laughs> the Bible also advocates for change. Nothing is to remain the same, even you, even your mind. Hallelujah. You are storing up wrath for yourself because of your stubbornness and your heart that refuses to change. God's just judgment will be revealed on the day of wrath. God will repay everyone based on their works. That's what is written. Psalms chapter number 62 verse, verse 12. Proverbs chapter number 24 verse 12. That's where you will find it. God will repay everyone based on their works. On the other hand, he will give eternal life to those who look for glory, honor, and immort immortality based on their patient good works. He will give eternal life to these people who are looking for glory, for honor, and immortality based on their patient good work. Patient good work. The Bible also says somewhere that do not be weary in doing good, for in due time, in due season, you reap a harvest. Hallelujah. So patience plays a key role here in the kingdom of God. There is no virtue that is. My friend, patience is a key thing. Patience. There is even one crown that, that actually comes, stems from, from patience. There are about five crowns that we, we receive. Five of them. One of them is actually attributed by, to patience. Now, but on the other hand, there will be wrath and anger for those who obey wickedness. Instead of the truth, because they are acting out of selfishness and disobedience, there will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil. For the Jew fast and also for the Greek. But there will be glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does what is good. For the Jew fast and also for the Greek. God does not have favorites. Hallelujah. Say God does not have favorites. God does not have favorites. Amen. Hallelujah. The favorites of God are those people who obey and who are 
filled with love. Hallelujah. Very wonderful. Yes. This is this is really nice. Now, as is where my someone end. Amen. It is exactly one or one. One or one. What have we talked today? We have talked about God giving a prophecy through prophet Ezekiel in chapter number 6 from verse number 24 saying that he will give us a new spirit his own spirit to live inside us so that we can do his own works amen hallelujah hallelujah this is very important it is so important that we realize what God is doing now this is very important one of the purposes of the of the spirit of god is to enable us to walk in accordance to his regulation and to carefully observe what the holy spirit is telling us through the word of god hallelujah now consider that scenario of that legal expert who came to Jesus and asked him how can i how can i gain eternal life in luke chapter number 10 from verse 25 consider that case and jesus says what is written in the law he referred him to the word he referred him jesus was not quoting things from heaven no he was telling people exactly as they are these things are near us now the man said the basic things that he needed that he knew what is written in the law how do you interpret it meaning do you have an understanding about the question you are asking me what does the law say if you are a legal expert ba 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 you shall love the lord with your heart with your strength with your mouth with your everything amen hallelujah <coughs> And he says he even quoted that you are supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And Jesus say exactly, just go and do that and then you will live. In Romans chapter number 1 from verse 18 there is a warning from, from apostle Paul. I'm just paraphrasing so that you will remember. Amen. Romans chapter number 1 from verse 18 There is a warning against ungodly people and with their ungodly behavior people who pursue injustice to cover up truth with injustice with their injustice Hallelujah People who are idolaters who pursue idols people who don't regard God people who don't see god through his creation god is to be seen through his creation because there is an invisible god who created the visible things amen and these two things are according to paul are supposed to reveal god's eternal power and divine nature hallelujah in verse in verse number 20 Romans chapter number 1 verse 20 The last bit of that verse says that humans are without excuse you don't have excuse no human being has an excuse <laughs> Hallelujah He says although they knew God they didn't honor God as God or thank him It is very dangerous Although you know God, you don't honor God as God and you don't also thank him. Amen. Hallelujah. A man and there is a muzungu actually, I don't know. I don't know where they were with Bishop Oyede. So when I don't know where they was, they were supposed to go somewhere or they were just showing me. But this guy monitored everything about Oyede for the time they were they were eating. But then they were somewhere He told him, you have said, praise God, or thank you, 
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He says that all the time. Even when he's preaching. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. By the way, how many of you know Tibi Joshua? Tibi Joshua is a very popular man. Did you? There is a sermon, maybe, if all of you are in our pages, I will send it. I'll just send it so that you'll see. He said, there is a simple way for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That simple way is to acknowledge it in little things as much as you did in greater things. Amen. Hallelujah. When you are eating, the you, you see that insignificant act or insignificant support you might need to, to lift up a spoon. Tell Jesus thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. To even to lift even to lift your leg like this. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When you go to shower, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. When you are preaching to people. Like this, you are supposed to say thank you, Jesus. When you are on keyboard, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So that word should not leave our mouths. Verse 21. Although they knew God, they did not honor God as God. Neither did they thank him. Blah, 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 blah. So many. Now, there is so much characters. If you see from verse 28, since they didn't think it was worthwhile to acknowledge God, they abandoned them. God abandoned them to a defective mind to inappropriate things. Now, it's another thing also. When God is not on your side, you are naturally inclined to evil. Amen. Even your mind. So it's not... It's not, it's not good. By the way, somebody said, even if you are filled with mistakes and sins, please, don't look at your sins. Lift up your eyes and look at Jesus. Amen. Are we together? Don't look at your mistakes because it's a trick. Lift your eyes and look at Jesus. And Jesus will take away the burden. Amen. Hallelujah. When you start seeing you are your inability, your mistakes. You have, you have spoiled. Look beyond your sins. Look beyond your mistakes. Look to the one who took your sins away. Because he was the appropriation for the sins. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, it is good as you read from verse 28 downwards up to, up to, up, up to verse 30. I wish I was you. And then we went to Jeremiah chapter number 17 from verse 5. God is proclaiming. The Lord is proclaiming. Cast out those who trust in mere humans. Who depend on human strength. Who depend on human strength. Even you to believe yourself that you, are can, do, that you can do anything by your own strength. Hey, you are idolizing your strength, man. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Oh, mercy, Lord. Remember mercy. And turn their hearts from the Lord. These people, according to verse 6, they, they shall be like desert shrub that doesn't know when relief comes. These people also live in parched places of the wilderness. You know there is a wilderness in this life? I'm not talking about child be desert. Hey, I'm not talking about child be desert. No, even you, while well, you are living here in Marsabit, there, there is a way you are just in the wilderness when God is not in your life. Amen. Hey. In a barren land where no one survives. No one survives. Happy are those who trust in the Lord. Who rely on the Lord. They will be like trees planted by the streams. And I told you, there's a difference here 
there's a difference between this one and that, that one of Psalms chapter number one. That one says that you will be planted by the sides of the, of the streams. But this one is apart from just being there by the, by the stream of the water. You are also shall be established downwards to the water. They won't fear drought when it comes. Their leaves will remain green. Amen. They won't be stressed in the time of drought. Amen. Or fail to bear fruit. Their most cunning heart is beyond help. Their most cunning heart is beyond help. They cannot be helped. Who can figure it out? I, the Lord, probe the heart and understand hidden motives and give everyone what they deserve. The consequences of their deeds. Then we went to Romans chapter number 2 from verse 1. Talked about the judgment of God. Now it is not enough. It's not appropriate for you to judge others. Because if you judge others of the same thing, you are also a doer of the same. And you say, the judgment of God are always true. They are on point. The judgment of God is agreeing with the truth. Verse number four. We are told, do you have contempt for the riches of God's generosity, tolerance, and impatience? Don't you realize that God's kindness is supposed to lead you to change your heart and life? Go, I told you there is a purpose for kindness. Now, these people will store up wrath for them, so themselves because of the stubbornness and their heart which refuses to change. And I told you, change is good. Positive change is good. Hallelujah. It is very, very important. And I read for you in verse number six. And I told you those the word the word there in verse in verse six can be found in Psalms chapter number sixty two verse verse twelve, Proverbs number twenty four, verse twelve. God will repay everyone based on their works. On the other hand, he will give eternal life to those who look for glory. This are God will give. God, God, God. Jesus said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That is now Jesus. Now, Paul is saying God, God also will give eternal life to those people who look for glory and honor and immortality based on the patient good work. Patient good work. God will give those ones eternal life. Hallelujah. And we finished. And I said, I have finished my son. So, let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give thanks. Oh, thank you for your kindness. To change our lives and hearts. Oh, Father, we thank you. For your kindness and love. We are your children. Oh, Father, where do we go without you? What can we do without, without you, without your help? What can be done except that, Lord, you are with people? Oh, Father, spare us from wrath. Wrath that is coming from the stubborn hearts and defective minds. Jesus, we are seeking you daily. We are asking God that you will show up yourself to us. Reveal yourself to us so that our minds and our convictions will be strengthened in you. Oh, Father, there are young people so much hungry for you, Holy Spirit. We are asking that God, you will guide us. Fill us with your power and your presence. Let it be known that God will serve you and we worship you. Just as in the days of Daniel, just as in the days of Elijah, Father, we thank you for protecting us, shielding us from all evil. We thank you 
If there is any sickness in our bodies, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Any pains dies out of our bodies in the name of Jesus. Any sickness that is in our bodies, we curse it in the name of Jesus Christ. Let that disease die and pass out of our bodies. We refuse to live with pains any other day. With diseases. No, 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 no. By the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. And if we were healed, we are now healed also. Remain healed forever until Jesus comes. We thank you. Let your protection be upon us. Let every prayer we have prayed today be answered. Let your word fill us. Let faith sprout and grow exceedingly in our hearts. That God, whatever you want us to do, Father, we will be able to do it. Oh, you are the changer of men. You are the changer of hearts. You are the one who holds everything. You are the reason for existence. You are the God who created everything. The created God. We honor you. Tonight, we thank you. We give thanks. As even now we move, we are blessed. As we come in, we are blessed. Thank you for the sacrificial time we have spent tonight praying. Our Father, we thank you. Jesus. We welcome you in our lives, in our families, in our careers, in our businesses. Let your blessing distinguish us in the name of Jesus. Let doors open that have been closed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you and we glorify your name in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen.